Hi everyone, welcome back to the VHS. It's good to see you. Um, this month we have something really interesting and different for you. Uh, we've been sent a video presentation from our esteemed friends at Ritsumeikan University in Kyoto, Japan. So that's Professor Koichi Hosoi, uh, the professor at the College of Image Arts and Sciences at Ritsumeikan University, and Professor Akinori Nakamura, a professor at the College of Image Arts and Sciences at Ritsumeikan University. Um, the presentation covers the history of game preservation at Ritsumeikan University uh, and looks at also their current preservation efforts as well. Um, so we start off with the Game Archive project, which was established in 1998. Uh, and that's really interesting because they have sort of three pillars of preservation that they're looking at. Uh, physical preservation, uh, preservation through emulation, and also the preservation of gameplay. Um, and then we have a discussion about the Ritsumeikan Centre of Game Studies, uh, the RCGS, which was established in 2011. And we have a look at the history of that organisation. And also we have a really fascinating behind the scenes look at their over uh, 9,000 um, video game items, materials, video games, all in this notion of the media mix, which is sort of a media arts mix of um, digital work. Uh, finally, we have a sort of discussion on the Ritzmaking Center for Game Studies online database, which is really interesting to look at how collaboration in the future, um, digitally, online, and between other institutions, hopefully can be um, instigated and furthered through uh, this resource. So uh, I'd like to thank again, Professor uh, Koichi Hosoi and Professor Akinori Nakamura for their time. Uh, it was a fantastic preservation. I've seen it a couple of times now, and each time I've watched it, um, something really interesting has jumped out at me. Uh, and I hope that will be the same experience for you. So thank you again very much and hope you enjoy. Hello, uh, I and Professor Nakamura would like to give a short presentation of game preservation activities in Ritsumeikan University. So Game Archive Project at Ritsumeikan University was established in April, 1998. Having a background of a small project initiated in my laboratory. Researchers at the Game Archive Project regarded the digital game as human cultural properties. And our initial aim was to establish a platform for researchers from multiple disciplines. However, we also realized that there was only a handful of scholar who had been studying digital games and simultaneously faced the challenges, realizing how we were so far apart from the developers of the digital games. Under such circumstances, we decided our first challenge should be to create the archive of all of software title which were produced for the family computer, Famicom. It was the first major video game console machine in Japan to provide opportunity for the third parties. This challenge compelled us to negotiate with Nintendo as we had no way to access necessary titles to accomplish this task. However, with the help of Mr. Masayuki Uemura, who then was the division head of uh, de development department one of Nintendo. We had successfully borrowed uh, 1,769 of the Famicom title, so which were preserved at Nintendo. So Mr. Wemra then became a colleague at our university. Besides in Nintendo, we visited several studios to initiate the actual preservation of game title. When we approached the staff from legal department usually uh, received us, which made the issue more complex than we hoped. One of the studios, Sega, however, understood our intention and started donation to products published by the company. 
Other than Sega, various game titles from multiple platforms had been donated regularly. So slowly expanding the number of collections at game archive project. To the end of the emulator uh, for the Famicom initiated in 2002 with the realization that physical object mainly made by synesthetic resin, semiconductor, and other electromagnetic components would decay in the long run. After a series of discussions with Nintendo and securing funding necessary to develop the device from the 21 century center of excellence program from the Ministry of Education. We had successfully received the permission from Nintendo to develop the emulation. So the device which we call Famicom Digital Library. The overall design of the device is shown in this slide. The box was designed to emulate precisely as the Famicom. It would be have both in digital and the analog as the game data is initiated from the generic computer. The system composed of the server, the game data transfer system, and emulator of the Famicom's memory management unit, which is compatible to over 10 type of read-only memory architectures, as well as the Famicom disk system architectures which allow the device to be compatible to all the released title for the Famicom. This short movie shows the test run. For the testing purpose, so two title, Donkey Kong and Mars were stored in the general computer and tested in play with the device. The test was successful, providing, providing that with the emulator, any software stored in the general computer can be retrieved and be played precisely at the original program. However, so also became apparent as the legal process was found to be a lot more complex than we imagined. And so considering video game preservation as the archives of cultural artifacts rather than commercial products. Recording the playing image is crucial in demonstrating how these products were enjoyed at the time the work had been created. Thus, recording the visual image of the gameplay is a better way for the preservation. Our approach, however, was not Mary, so recording the uh, frame images, but also simultaneously uh, recording the timing of pressing a button for each gameplay, so that the user of this system will be able to view how game players were playing and precisely how they use the interface upon playing. This was possible by showing both playing image and signal pattern from the pressing of the button as shown in this slide. So uh, this short movie was for the sample image. Uh, after many experiences done, we reviewed 
noticing that there were difference in the play. This is a difference in the play style between mobile, mobile so player and those of the avid players. So further showing the importance of the observing the gameplay image in this manner. So after these initial efforts, so we come to conclude that for digital game preservation, there are at least three forms of preservation. And if possible, the object need to be uh, preserved in all these forms, which are namely one uh, physical preservation, accompanying with digital data archive uh, which uh, register information sufficient to identify the preserved materials. And the second, preservation in the form of emulation. And finally, third, so digital moving images of the people playing the game. Okay, um, now I'd like to discuss about the uh, history of Brits American Center for Game Studies. This was established in 2011. Uh, first uh, chair or the president of Brits American Center for Game Study was uh, Wimura Sensei who created Famicom. And then from 2021, 10 years after that, I took over his place and then now become president for this center. Uh, the American Center for Game Study was founded in April 2011 as the only academic research institute for the field of game studies in Japan at that time. It aims to form a network of game study locations, both domestically and overseas, uh, taking advantage of our strengths as a large comprehensive university and being located in Kyoto, which is the birthplace of the Japanese video game industry. Next week. So here's a perspective of digital game archiving uh, and then the scheme of that. So um, we have a catalog and we have an object which is actual products, emulator, playing images, or history and networking. And then from the social activity perspective, uh, it could be entertainment, it could be exhibitions, it could be studies, it could be education, it could be tech development, it could be business and then so on. So uh, as a body of researcher, we all need uh, this digital archiving and preservation in order to study further into the field of digital game studies and also for the research. So with that, we had a chance to be able to collaborate with Agency for Cultural Affairs. It's a government body of Japan. And then we are able to uh, take our uh, various resources uh, which accumulated at our center to be able to uh, create uh, this project uh, uh, for promoting support of media arts. And also projects for improvement of information and media arts collections, uh, which will, will be discussed further by Professor Hosoi later again and regarding cataloging and then uh, creating metadata for preservations. And also we are working on projects for promoting collaboration with media arts. Uh, as you know that the video game are now important part of uh, what is called transmedia or uh, media mix now. We call it media mix in Japan, in other parts we call it transmedia or maybe cross media uh, or one source multi-use multi or uh, uh, there's a lot of terms into that, but anyway, uh, collaborating with comic industry or animation industry, or sometimes in, in, in a case like media arts or maybe film study is crucial to be able to have a correct way of preserving intellectual property. So we're currently collaborating with these bodies as well. So um, here is actual uh, games and then resources uh, which are collected by RCGS. Um, right now I'm in a room uh, which have a various collection. Later, we'll actually go through all these collections uh, for you to view. But at this time, I'd like to just kind of explain what's going on. 
So as a software uh, for the unduplicated count, we have 9,583 titles. We will have a game hardware and peripherals. Hardware consists of about 110, and peripherals are around 200. So these uh, hardware not include Japanese domestic hardware, but also hardware outside from Japan. And uh, regarding game related materials, we have game magazines. Uh, a lot of them are from Japan, about 2,455. Uh, 2, we have magazines and books, which are around 1,500. We have walkthrough manuals or a strategy book. Uh, we have a 355. Promotional flyers about games or software, that's 1,200. Newspaper and advertisement from 1999 until 2018, we have around 700. And the soundtrack, uh, we have 100 as of July 2021. And then for the physical preservations, all the products are located at the British American Center for Game Studies at the Shugakan 223, 224, and 234 uh, rooms that we're using right now. Uh, among which Shuka, uh, Shugakan 223 is designated for dedicated use of storage and, and then that was uh, uh, maintained with temperature around 24 Celsius with humidity, 50% environment. Uh, those which are considered as a high priority for preservation that are stored in this area. And QR code is placed on each item uh, in, in order to track the locations. But those goods considered as rare are exceptions. Label are made of paper, and non-weaven fabric are placed on the container of the item because there is a rare items. Each resources are located in a box. Uh, so designation of the box is recorded for individual resources data, which is registered in, in record um, as a recording uh, for the collections. So our current status of bi bibliographic record of video games in Japan as uh, following. And the production and the distribution bibliographic record in Japan is still limited. So besides 4,700 titles stored in national um, library, national diet library, uh, those institutions which can create catalog has virtually a little titles is stored. So the academic relationship with governmental bodies such as uh, like national libraries and so forth is quite lim limited at this moment. But the 585 institution of public libraries, museum, art museum, library at the university and vocational school, uh, we have 372 responses. But the number of the, those uh, which consider that they have video game is still quite limited, as you could see in this uh, chart. And then there are variation in the game materials held by collections organized around the world, both in terms of quantity and qualities. Uh, the one on the blue uh, is our uh, collections. Our collection, the most of them are um, focused on like PlayStations and, and era around year 2000. But the latest collection, we have limited amount uh, because our purpose was to, to maintain the preservations of uh, various collection from the past. So we, we tend to focus on these times. Uh, but then if you look at the uh, Strong Museum play, uh, also their collection is really focused on around two, uh, 1990s, 1995, and 2000. So again, the latest collection is still limited. Uh, Leipzig University, however, uh, have more collections around the year 2005 up until the present. And so are the National Diet Library. Uh, because uh, they started around the year uh, 2000. And then recently, a lot of company are now donating those uh, game software to them. So that's why their collection uh, tend to be, uh, have more collections from year 2005 up to uh, present. So if you look at the figure from platform perspective, uh, uh, even though the Famicom archiving for uh, Japanese version of Nintendo Entertainment System is already around 20, uh, 99%, uh, the recent uh, 
figures are there's a big gap between them uh, and of course another issue has to do with uh, any of those video games that has to do with pre uh, famicom era uh, the archiving or preservation of pre famicom era is quite limited uh, because uh, there are still there's a lot of variations to those software so it was not easy for us to track on these uh, software at this moment so we haven't done it you know uh, again the latest console game archiving is limited because it's a recent product it's available at this moment so um we are not uh, uh, collecting those uh, aggressively because it's not going to die out or anything like that so that's why our collection is still focused on all these uh, older era rather than the latest one, but they're not as old as those who are before the Famicom. So I could see for this, um, again, it's all in Japanese. So it's difficult to see, uh, take a look at it. Of course, there's no preservation on arcade. <laughs> we have a high percentage of archiving for a uh, family computer, as I explained to you. Um, Dreamcast is still limited in an amount of uh, game available. So uh, we're uh, having about 80, 84% of them already being preserved. Uh, again, uh, PC Engine, uh, which is created by NEC, we have 100%. So uh, older console, we have 100% of uh, preservations. Uh, but then the recent one, we're still limited. So we have to work on it. But then, yes, we also need the funding for that as well. So I think we have a common uh, issues between us and as an institution as well. Okay, here are some of the archives that we have. Um, as you can see, um, all the numbers are designated uh, like this. And then everything is preserved as this one. So uh, let's take a look at some of the stuff. So you can see uh, all of these titles are stored uh, like this. So all the items are already included here. For example, get the so this is a common entity. That's one of the uh, classic Japanese um, games. Sound the focus game um, by Chunsoft. So it's got a packaged brochure and then and disc itself stored like this. We got the fruit of Game Boy software, which is very rare. It's got one of the early uh, Pokemon here. Example from Agent Arcadia. Here is an example about the uh, Dory Magazine, dedicated magazine called Dory Manga. So most of the issues are already stored. And, and these are example from a coin journal. So that's about the arcade games. Uh, it's being uh, this magazine is one of the oldest magazines about the video game. Now here you can find the hardware in the box, all the peripheral devices. This one is a Super Scope from Super Nintendo. So this one is a GameCube with DVD players by Panasonic. So Panasonic created this device, which is quite rare and not available in other parts of the world, I think. Sega Saturns. Let's get the twin stick uh, controller for uh, Sega Saturn as well, for the virtual on which was once really popular. This is like a box for uh, Breakout by Nintendo 
and a family basic and it's got a computer disk system all boxed in uh, in a regular box to make sure that, that it's preserved correctly so it's got two family computer we got a, a Nintendo Entertainment System that's the oldest one called Television 6 it's all in the box it's a TV that has Dreamcast attached it was sold uh, with the limited numbers uh, we are somehow able to get the hold of this okay so here is the actual device that we discussed so uh Wilmer, professor Wilmer works on this device and then this is a second and third generation so he has been continuously devising those devices and then updating uh, functionalities and then corresponding um, the responses of all these de devices okay so here is an example to that so as you can see um, as you the player are playing the games um, each button is pushed the green and then red and also uh, there's a number of the times the blue button has been pushed, uh, counted, and recorded on the uh, top right. Okay, so um, this is another part of uh, uh, preservation, is oral history. Uh, there's a lot of people who are involved in developing uh, video games. So we decided to, uh, to go to the people who are now retired from companies uh, uh, and then really discuss about their lives and how they uh, go, went about and developed games. Uh, starting from a person who developed a uh, space emitter uh, to those who created Pac-Man and the other game titles which are considered as important. We also worked uh, on with the person who are in charge of actually developing early phase of video game magazines and stuff like that. So we are not just only looking into people who are developing games. Uh, we are not looking into somebody who's just really famous uh, video game uh, developers because all these uh, developers already uh, recorded or documented uh, in regards to how they develop games and so on. But then we looked at all the ecosystem of game business in the game industry from that perspective and then look into someone who hasn't uh, had a spotlight on, on their uh, works. So uh, some of the people are not necessarily famous, but then uh, we selected those people who were historic, historically considered very important. With the defining and expanding of database, our team had been working on modifying the former system to create with an entity relationship model, considering a special property uh, that enables uh, archivists for cataloging and designing of metadata uh, for the database. This is the uh, overall picture of the metadata schema for the game. And it's related materials that we have completed, completed at this stage. The name is our CGS collection. So in developing the service, we used Omeka S, an open source software for publishing data collections. To organize and describe a wide variety of materials, we defined a form of information for each type of resources. The type of resources we are uh, referring to here, uh, for example, video game package and related materials, and individuals and organizations that are authors and publishers of these materials, and game title and gameplay genre, and so on. The type of resources here 
range from the concrete to the abstract. In this service, based on this type of information, we have created data on the item in the collection. And they are related objects and or things and made them searchable. The figure on the right is an overview of the data model, showing the main type of information or entities and their relationships. The modeling was based on data model for a library, such as the IFRA, IFLA library reference model, as well as previous search on video games. Of these defined entities, the physical one were cataloged by the cataloger based on the material, and the data was created. On the other hand, works and topics, for example, gameplay, genre, series, characters, were linked to external database, such as Wikidata and VIAF before to obtain and create the data. This is a, a screen transition diagram of the RCGS collections. For the sake of usability, it has a simple structure with only three steps. The first is the top page, where you can search by uh, entering keywords, just like a search engine like a Google. Second is the list of research results. Here, the items that correspond to the search target are listed. Then there is a landing page, the item detail page, and so on. These were designed to handle the multiple form of information I mentioned earlier in a informed manner. Also, each resource detail page has a unique URL. And this is designed so that the URL itself functions as an ID, so-called URI. And these data are not only accessible in the browser and uh, viewable as pages, but they are also available as database, data set, that shows their logical structure. It is data uh, that is recorded and published in text, as shown in the figure on the left and in the uh, serialized form to uh, represent the graph shown in the figure on the right. This form of data is called linked data and is a fundamental technology for the exchange and open opening the opening of structured data on the web using URI. All the structure, all the structured data of all the sources registered in the in this database are combined into one and the uh, sparkle endpoint. Sparkle endpoint is published as RCGS Sparkle. Here, all database query are supported expect for adding data. This make it possible to perform rich searcher, for example, to retrieve data for opportunity learning and even data analysis and so. The figure on the right is an example of data analysis showing the number of game journals published by Nintendo as a bar chart. And these efforts uh, lead RCGS to work under the agency of cultural affairs for uh, constructing a digital game section of media art database since 2012. This slide shows the website in present. 
as various information regarding the data games is sometimes unfounded. The data have been cross-referenced cross before the registration with all the references we used have been cited in the database. Allowing other researchers to use these data as the source of reference. The number of game titles which have been registered in this database are 48,118 titles by July this year. And then uh, currently we're visiting and finding out exactly uh, what these museum and the archive uh, location are doing in terms of video game preservations. All these places on the red are the places which we have visited uh, for the past few years. Um, and yes, we are also collaborating as well. Uh, these places are uh, playing an increasingly important role in uh, developing uh, video game preservations. And now, yes, uh, Nintendo are start having their own per version of museum and also Koei Tecmo games are trying to do that as well. Uh, so this uh, video game company and publisher now try to work on a museum. So hoping we are hoping that we could collaborate with these places as well. So here is an example of some of the museum we visited in the past. So um, yes, some of the places are um, preservation focus. Others are more focused on exhibitions. Uh, from the academic perspective, it is important to look into all these places and find out uh, and up, find out up to date information on what they're doing. And yes, uh, also we, uh, with this, we also started working on international collaboration uh, by forming collaborative network. Yes, uh, National Video Game Museum. Uh, that having this uh, kind of special lecture is part of our efforts for collaborations. In the past, we had a chance to actually go to uh, Stone New Museum Play in New York, Rochester, uh, and then uh, collaborated with them for having special exhibition on Nintendo Entertainment System uh, when it went to 30th anniversary. Uh, we asked Wemura. Professor Uemura to discuss about his story about how he went about and created a uh, family computer, which later became Nintendo Entertainment System. And we also had a chance to have him go to National Video Game Museum and discuss about his story there in the UK and other parts of places as well. We also uh, went to Universal Leipzig or we went to uh, computer Spill Museum, uh, games, uh, Game Science Center, and other parts of the world in Korea, Italy, um, and National Video Museum in the States. Uh, we also went to academic places like University of Arizona, and, and we also even went to Nintendo of America, uh, having permission from Professor Uemura, uh, because he still, he still was advisor to the Nintendo at that time. We also visited the Korean Aizong Museum, and then we went to Flinder University in Australia to find out about exactly what they're doing, and, and then a Center of Moving Image in Australia because they have their own exhibition as well. So um, now we are trying to uh, have this global network of uh, collaborator and then cooperators because it is important uh, that uh, video game is global from very start. Uh, ever since uh, Nolan Bushner came up with Pong, a uh, similar uh, game was already introduced in Japan and other parts in the UK and so forth. So um, uh, e video game industry in a way become global instant instantaneously, right? So that's why it's important for us uh, to continue to collaborate and then uh, uh, create a network uh, between us and then other institution in the world. And then uh, for the future, we'll continue to do that as well. So here's some of the example we worked on. Um, so we went to these places. Uh, uh, we had a collaboration with a strong national museum play to came up with special exhibitions uh, 
proposed by our idea and then yes of course uh, they have their own idea and they combine it together and they make it fun entertaining and also educational exhibitions like that other parts of the places we visited and sometimes we had a special uh, international academic conference uh, at the museum and so forth uh, we brought a keynote to them and so forth so we had a quite important um, historical um, event that taking place in all these places as we visited all these places. Now, uh, if you look at the uh, comparative map uh, between the budget and then and then number of collections, and then these is a kind of example. Uh, the number of circle kind of explain how big uh, the size of uh, uh, the people who visited them are. Um, uh, well, it's not surprising, but in place like a uh, museum for Draymond or International Manga Museum or um, other places. I guess the places which has more visitors in general are the comic museum or manga, we call it museum at this moment. And then the number of uh, uh, participants uh, uh, for the video game museum is at this moment is almost mostly academic focus. So it's still limited. Um, we have a Toxas Museum, which has a circle in yellow. Uh, we have a, also Animation Museum uh, and stuff like that. But then for the game related to museum, we are, usually it's a focus on academics and not for the exhibition purpose. But then we are anticipating uh, with the Nintendo and then uh, Koei Tecmo games are start building their own version of museum. I think that would attract more tourists and stuff like that. So uh, the landscape will change in a few years, we are supposing. And then this is an international uh, comparisons. As you could see, yes, comic has a quite a bit of uh, participants, but then so are the video games, like a computer spill museum, uh, lab fish, uh, uh, video game museum uh, in the UK, and then Nexon Computer Museum, um, Stanford, and also uh, National uh, Strong National Video and Play. Uh, they're uh, represented with uh, blue. Uh, we have some media art museum as well. Yes, comic and animation is quite substantial. Uh, Walt Disney uh, Archive was the largest, uh, I guess, uh, uh, tourists uh, which are coming to their places. But then uh, we really need to know uh, how we could uh, make sure uh, to have this kind of impact that video game has a global perspective and then bring it to Japan. Uh, uh, so for that, we have to work on it for the future. So with that, uh, we are already start having this international collaborations, and we also have a domestic collaboration as well. Uh, it's Mecca, Meiji University, National Diet uh, Library, uh, Osaka Dentsu University, Kyoto Seika University. We are collaborating, collaborating with those in institutions to, to, to help each other and collaborate each other. And we also have our international collaborations Strong Lab TV, a National Video Game Archive, uh, Stanford, and uh, other places as will come up, uh, across uh, with them. So I guess uh, this is why we are having this lecture. Um, uh, we are hoping that we we'll, would we'll like to extend our uh, collaborations. In fact, we are uh, doing some other work uh, for a National Video Game. Uh, museum uh, at this moment and hopefully it's going to uh, have even better um, impact uh, not only uh, to academics but also uh, to people in the general for interest in video game. Okay so this is it for our presentation uh, we have an email here if you're interested in uh, talking to us and contacting us please send us email and then um, please, uh, I would like to welcome to, to come to Kyoto. You have a time.
Thank you very much. And now I'd like to show you around some of the stuff that we have at Ritsumeikan. 